Danny Rocco with the magazine here at Hunt and Fish in Manhattan with the one, the only, the infamous Big Daddy. How are you? I'm good, Danielle. How are you? I am doing fantastic. I'm so glad you're here with me today. I am glad as well. I'm, I'm ecstatic. I'm happy. Look, we're accomplishing several things here. I'm getting interviewed by you yeah. for your wonderful publication. And we're at my favorite restaurant in Manhattan. And we're going to kill like five birds with one stone today. We're going to do amazing. I have been here one time. So when I heard we were shooting here and going to eat and drink and be merry here, I was like, come on. This is my lucky day. Two times lucky day for me here with you. And we're going to eat and drink. So if you don't know Big Daddy, he is the man of many hats, like amazing things. You are the president and the CEO of Coastal Advisor LLC. Yes. Okay, so share with the world exactly what that is. Uh, we're an insurance consulting firm. So we've been in business over 25 years, and we've had the great fortune and blessings to insure some of the top professional athletes and entertainers in the world of, you know, obviously sports, media, television, and so, and so forth. So if I was one of those people, what would being a client look like? Well, the one thing that, uh, and we, we joke around about it, my, my partner Chris Miro and I, is we tell people, you don't have to be big or small. You just have to be have a need. So it, it doesn't matter if you're celebrity status like you or if you're uh, my mailman. Everyone has a need, an insurance need, and we're there to service that need for all our clients, no matter what their background is. I love that. I love that. So how did you get a niche? I mean, you have a history. You have a story. You got, you, how did you get this niche into, like, professional athletes? I mean, that's... Well, it's, it started at a young age. I, I just uh, happened to be at the right place at the right time. <laughs> and uh, some of the people that uh, I grew up with, we, you, you know, we joke around and say that, you know, these are guys that picked up jocks and socks and towels, and, and then they progressed, you know, to vice president of teams, to, you know, f uh, footwear apparel at Nike. Uh, you know, one of my best friends, Mike Newsom, he is my, like, he's a brother to our whole family, but he's a guy that also, uh, you know, he collected towels and brought ice and this and that. And so, and you develop relationships. So I'm always grateful to those people because without them, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Mm, that just shows me that you are a people person from the very beginning. Yeah. You believe in the relationships, and that is, I'm assuming, why you're so successful. I mean, without the relationship aspect, you would, you would just be another guy. You just, you wouldn't be Big Daddy. You wouldn't have that presence <laughs> about you. Well, My Italianism's coming out uh, now. I hear that. Uh, well, <laughs> you know what? It, it, I always try to. What you, it, I will do what I say, mm. and that's really what I try to do. And my reputation, like, I, I worry about that so much that, you know, it's, you get to a point where you really become conscious of it because of people around you and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and, and I always try to associate with people that are good people mm -hmm. and will do what they're going to say, we'll, you know, will do what they say. And, and there's no time for shenanigans or any of that because, you know what, just like you, we're all under a microscope. Mm -hmm. Every microscope is different. And mine has gotten um, broader, yeah. and it's a brand, so to speak. And but I'm very careful of it. You know, I'm very conscious of it. And the one thing I never want to do is let down a friend, a client, or a colleague. Yeah. Because you know what? I, I don't care what most people say, but it hurts when you let someone down. Mm -hmm. You know, and I believe in, in you know you can help as many people as you want. Unfortunately, when you're your network grows beyond your, your, your like grasp. You have to learn sometimes to say no, but you know, there's certain people that are close to me that I would run through that wall for them. Yeah. And they, and they know that. And, uh, and as long as they, are, they're appreciative of it, I'll do it. Right. Right. You know, you can't control a lot of things in this world, but yeah. you can control what you say and what you do. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why we're, we connected so well yeah. because we have that same kind of, you know, like, about like, life. Yeah. yeah, that. But so let's go back to your uh, 
athletics. You so you were football. Was, was football um, huge in your family? Because your brother is also he's he's a little something something in the football world. Yeah, yeah. We well we have three boys and we were all fortunate enough to go to college and play football. And then obviously the superstar of the family is our youngest brother who is an assistant coach on the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're so proud of him because we we know how hard he's worked to get to that level. And it's not, you know, the NFL, where everyone jokes around, it stands for not for long. Yeah. And, you know, just like the players have to perform or they get cut, the coaches have to win mm -hmm. or they get fired. So it's uh, that's the one thing I could say that, you know, I'm so proud of him because I, you know, I go to games, I've seen him do his stuff, and we have our little ritual that we have going on, and and uh, it's great. And you guys have something uh, special that you've started together. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's that Big Daddy Youth Football Camp? Yes. We Tell do me it. a little bit about that. Yeah, well, we started that, my brother and I. It was kind of funny. I started the one year without him, and <gasps> I did it with, a, yeah, shame on me. Come on But now. he was in a he was in a different place at the time. Yeah. So, um we started with a couple of local guys and then, you know, it just made sense to why not have your own family involved? So, yeah. and then my brother elevated his status to an NFL coach. So it's funny because we get guys mm -hmm. that come in to volunteer, they come to the camp and my brother sees them, you know, at games and whatnot right. and it comes up and, and it's been great to ask the guys to come back and give to these kids. And the, and the thing that we do about the camp is I'm basically mm -hmm. the, uh, my brother's the head coach, and he runs the camp. So I'm like the maid, the handyman, and the food delivery guy, and all these other things all wrapped up in one. But we make sure that the kids get a, an, a, an experience like they're in an NFL camp because wow. they get coaching from players, retired or current, and same as coaches. And then after practice, we feed each camper. Like wow. we, we set up a training table. The camp is really something that is so rewarding because mm. – you see these kids and, and their little faces. And, and I told a story about what it really hit me was in year two when my brother had all the campers surround me. And, you know, they were all going, Big Daddy, Big yeah. Daddy. And I was like, wow. It almost brought a tear to my eye because yeah. it was like, you know, not every kid is fortunate enough to go to a football game, to meet a pro athlete. Mm -hmm. You know, it becomes expensive. It comes out of the way. And... and and in Long Island, where we grew up, there is really no pro sports left. You know, we had the Jets there, and they moved. The Giants are in New Jersey. But we wanted to bring that back to Long Island because mm -hmm. football has really it's taken a step back, you know, due to soccer and lacrosse. So it was important that we did that, and we made, kid ha made, we made kids happy. And the one thing that I really enjoy doing is, and I'm fortunate to be a uh, – you know, part of the Fox family, Fox and Friends. Yes. So we bring the campers on uh, on Sunday morning, the day before the camp. So we sh we do drills on the on the street there, and and I'm so uh, fortunate to have uh, Brian Kilmeade and Pete Hexeth has come out to the camp. You know, so wow. and and that's to bring a diverse a diversity, meaning, you know, you got to be successful on the field, but you also have to be successful off the field. And both guys have played collegiately sports, yeah. and they're successful off the field. So that's why, you know, I don't bring them out for the parents and to talk politics and all that. This is for the kids to learn and get a different view of what success is all about. I love that, how you said it. It is, it is all about the children. You know, you take something that's so out of their, like, it's in their dream, yeah. and you're creating it a it as in a reality to them. So now it opens the world in so many aspects, not just sports, but with anything that comes onto their heart. You show them it takes the work, it's touchable, it takes teamwork, camaraderie, all of those kinds of things and you put it into one. So that is, you know, that's a big deal on multiple levels. So I have to like commend you for, yeah, well, you know, because you. you don't have to do that stuff. That's uh, it, it's uh, time consuming. And, and, and but you know what? It's a friend of mine uh, who um, is the CEO of Arizona Ice Tea, his name is Don Voltaggio. Mm -hmm. And I always live by this one saying that he said at one of my uh, charity events. He said, when you think you've given enough, give more. Mm. And I never forget that. 
Yeah. And I, I never give him credit, but now I'm going to give yeah. him credit because I'm stealing his line. He is the one that uh, shared that in front of a lot of people at my celebrity golf classic because we honored him one year. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that giving back, my brother and I just love it because we do it at our school, too. So oh, come on. Hometown. That's like, you're going to make me... That's like a big deal. Well, it is. That, that, that uh, makes it even, like, deeper of a big deal. Well, it, it's not forgetting where you came from. Yeah. Yeah. We all come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people forget, and that's where it turns upside down. So let's go back to this golf tournament. Tell me about this. It's something I started uh, about six years ago, and uh, we did it for a good four years, and then we took a break, and now we're looking to bring it back into – it's a who's who of, you know, my friends mm -hmm. that come from all over the place. I mean, we got people that come in from L.A., from St. Louis, from Dallas, from, and uh, it's a two-day event. And we raise money for certain charities like St. Jude. Yep. Um, this year we're going to change it up. We're, we're not making an announcement yet, and I can't let it out. But uh, it'll be significant, and it'll be very uh, rewarding mm -hmm. to the benefactors, yeah, and um, it's one big party. So, do these uh, who who's and whatnots? Do they actually play the golf, yes. or yeah. so everybody that comes and participates is playing on? Was it the green? Is that what they call it? Yeah, I don't on even the know. greens, on the golf yeah. course, but uh, not all of them. We've had certain. Uh, I'll share a story with you. Uh, one, of, it's a true pursuit question, kind of. <laughs> okay, so. Name a golf outing that's had a Super Bowl winning coach serve alcohol during the game. Oh, dear heavens, I have no idea. Like, I'm well, like... No, I know, but I know you're not going to know, but that, that coach is Baltimore Ravens head coach Brian Billick. He's not a golfer, but he said, Big Daddy, I will contribute in another way. And he drove around with this big cart that served alcohol and beer or whatever. Yeah. And uh, and he had his big ring on, and he was and he was taking pictures with everybody, serving alcohol. So everyone participates in one way or another. Oh, I love that. I love that because I would not be. I have had one golf story. It was for a fundraiser, and I got yelled at because I stunk. I wasn't fast enough. Well, they're not supposed so to. Yell, like, they're not supposed what? to get yelled at. That was my one golfing like so. You're Maybe I'll have. To, yeah, you're not supposed to get yelled at. It's supposed to be fun. I don't even play myself. I run around. I want to make sure that everyone's enjoying themselves. I want to make sure that everyone's hydrated. I want to make sure everybody has food. Well, and, I can and, be and, your and, partner in crime with that. Yeah, that's so like that's, my uh, speed. I run around and, you know, and make sure that you're the behind uh, my the name's scenes. on Yeah, my name's on it, so i got to make sure it's on it's par. It's Ah, oh, you're so good. You're so good. <laughs> Tell me about this outfit here. Um, well, you are a Sax member. What is it called? A brand ambassador? We have, yeah, we what have. Is, what is this? How do you become that? How do I become that? We've, uh, well, I don't deal with the women's side, so I can't <laughs> help there. But uh, this is something that we formed a couple of years ago. Yeah. And uh, we dress some very notable TV personalities like Kevin Weeks from the NHL mm -hmm. Network. Uh, Bob Papa from the New York Giants and NBC Golf, and he does about 25 shows. I can't keep up with him, so that's why I'm going to just cut it short there. Yes. Uh, Brian Baldinger from NFL Network and uh, Eric Coleman, who's yeah. with CBS and does college football. So we 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 are dressed to the nines, and we and our goal is to make sure that everyone knows that we're in this clothes, yeah, and that this is the best place to go get custom clothes. So, well, I have to tell you, what I love is that I will, like, like I'll look at you and I'll be like, that looks so really good. That is really well put together. Yeah. And then I'll be like, hey, you need to go copy this and go, <laughs> you need to go to Saks and go get this because it looks really good. You are doing, your, you're doing your job. Do you have to have a, did you have your own custom closet made? Uh, That's what no, I would go for. I had custom racks brought to my house. Uh, and, to keep up? Uh, everything was teed up in colors and because I am not good at matching shirts with ties or any of that stuff. Yeah. But uh, Most men aren't. Yeah, we had, uh, we were fortunate enough that we have our our head coach, as we call him. Yeah. Uh, and he comes and makes sure that we're all in tune. You're what like, we're supposed to be wearing, yeah. You are looking good. And thank you, because you, I know men watch, like, your channel. They watch you to see what's out there, to see how to dress, and then to mimic that, like, because a lot of them don't know. They don't have a wife or a wife that helps, then 
How are they supposed to know? It's people like you. Yeah. Well, you. I, uh, I definitely need all the help I can get. <laughs> and uh, Well, you got I, it. I, uh, I definitely, I'm blessed and fortunate, and it, it's great to wear stuff like this because it fits outstanding. It mm. looks great. And uh, You want to be comfy. Yeah, you want to be comfortable. and um, You're a and busy you wanna, man. Yeah, and listen, I'm a T-shirt and shorts guy. Yeah. But uh, when I'm out and I have to be on air or do some business dealings or whatnot, look, I, I want to dress as good as anyone. Yeah. Well, you are, you do look good today. Well, thank you. you so do, do we, you. So yeah, we, 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 yeah, we, we didn't even that. call each other. We yeah, just we ended up this way. Yeah, we just showed it's up. And, and natural. I, I just took this off the rack. So. <laughs> I did not. It was a little harder, but you know what? We work. You and I. Yeah. But I heard through the grapevine you have a couple new um, adventures coming up. Can you give like a sneak peek to us, or do we, you know, uh, do we get well, anything? Well, I, yeah, I have a couple of things that um, one is in the food industry. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. And uh, it'll be funny when it comes out because a lot of people are gonna associate me with it very easily. Um, the other one has to do with clothing. Mm -hmm. More on not the soups, but uh, something that will help make this look even better. You know, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. And then the other thing is, is more of a business thing. It's more of a, it's a game changer in the world of fuel. Oh my God! So we can how how are we gonna like find you? How do I keep? Because I want to I want to be the first to know when these things launch. When you open your, you know, open your mouth and give the world what these secrets are. I want to be the first to know about it. So how would I do that? You could follow me on all my social media. I'm under on, Big Daddy. Uh, well, ready under at Facebook. I'm under Richard M. Salgado. Believe it or not, which is to a lot of people in this world don't know my real name, mm -hmm. but. Uh, and then on Twitter, I'm at, at Coastal Advisors. And on Instagram, uh, I am at Big underscore Daddy underscore Insures. Gotcha. Yeah, and I'm also on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn as well. So I think I do stalk you on all your platforms. So I think I'm set. Well, I think I got cool. them all. You got me. I, I got you. And thank you so much for sharing. And if you could share one thing with the world that is made an impact in you or you just want to say think of something this way what would it be mm. I didn't a, even prep a, you on yeah, that yeah I know there's a few you know it's um, look I get out of bed every day and I, and I pray to God every night that he allows me to get out of bed every day and I'm grateful for all the things uh, you know like everyone else, I've, I've been at the top, I've gone to the bottom, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I'm working my way up. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, God and family and all those things that everyone always talks about, those are very meaningful, and I believe in them 100%. And uh, I had an incident in 2008 where I had a brain aneurysm, mm -hmm. um, and God said, it's not my time to go. And I think... After that, that was really my wake-up call, and um, I figured that, listen, I'm on this earth to do something, and what that is, I got to figure it out, and, and, and I figured it out, and it's being fortunate and being blessed to be in some of the greatest things. Look, I'm here with you. I mean, what? I, I know a hundred guys that would kill to be here, but, you know, those are, those are things that, um, that's how I look at stuff. Yeah. I, I look at it every day, and uh, and. And I also look at it from other people's perspective because, you know, so many people say this, that, this, that, this, that, but they don't do. And then when you, then they come to you for help. And then when you help along, you know, sometimes you get a little discouraged because I go at a different pace and I want people to go at that pace. And sometimes no, people don't do that. And it's kind of like, but what else do I got to do? You know, it's like, I, I, it's like me taking over your job. Okay, right now, all of a sudden, let's flip chairs, and and but I'm doing it this way. Yeah. And, and then you're like, well, that's not how I'm going to do it. Well, if you want to get it done the right way, this is how you do it. <laughs> you know. So uh, I always have to learn to taper my, uh, <laughs> I guess, my excitement or enthusiasm. Yeah. When it comes to doing stuff like that, but mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, look, I'm alive and I'm healthy, 
and I'm surrounded by great people. Well, you are definitely a blessing. You are definitely here for a reason. And I want to thank you so much for open up in your time and your heart and our meal that we're going to have oh, here. Oh, listen at it. Look at this. I this mean, is, this is just the beginning part of it. Yeah, this is my, like I said, my favorite place. And, and I guess I'm going to say cheers because I'm the first one here with you. So Salute. Salute and keep being inspired.